Hello and welcome to this GFM talk about live marking and feedback. My aim during this presentation is to give you a rationale for using live marking and feedback as one strategy within your classroom toolkit to help pupils make excellent progress. I'll hope to give you some examples of good practice and tips of how to use this in class with the hope that you'll give it a go over the coming weeks and you'll see the benefits of using live marking and feedback within your classrooms. It's important to note at the start how this fits within our feedback policy within the GFM. What is the purpose of live marking? Now we use Hattie's approach to feedback and the live feedback and marking that we might do will feature within the middle section of this where we're feeding back how am I doing? And giving students an indication of where they're going well, identifying their strengths and also correcting and pushing them onwards within the context of the lesson. All of our feedback is to enable students to make better progress, to learn with increasing independence and to achieve positive outcomes. Also, for them to feel valued and that their efforts are valued. And that dialogue that might happen between student and teacher, pupil and teacher, during live feedback can be really transformative and really powerful in doing all of these things. It also helps to note that marking and feedback needs to be meaningful, manageable and motivating. And within the GFM policy, we look for the three strands that relate to academic progress, might link to assessment and learning objectives, but also character skills that link to the Gosport Futures and the GFM way, as well as the interpersonal skills that will be demonstrated through that dialogue as the teacher and learner discuss and talk about what they're seeing during the live marking and feedback process. I think it's important to note the context in which we're working currently. There is a need to be conscious of teacher workload. A DfE publication from a few years ago states how quantity shouldn't be confused with quality and that practice needs to be focused on what is best for pupils, where the feedback is meaningful, manageable and motivating, as I've said. And live marking is a way of achieving all of these objectives, can be really effective, really focused and done within the lesson can make a massive difference to teacher workload. So what is live marking? It is exactly what it says it is. Marking at the time in the lesson as the pupils are engaged with an activity or a task, getting out amongst the classroom and speaking to them, looking at their work focusing on what they're doing well, identifying that with, with them, praising them for what they're doing well, and also pushing them onwards, looking at what they've written, what they're doing, if it's a practical activity or a practical lesson, what is it that they have done, what is it they're doing that they can make one step, two steps of progress on, improve that sentence or that paragraph that they've written. And that individual focus is what it's all about. You can only do live marking in this way with individuals or with very small groups. Whole class feedback is a totally different activity and a different tool to use within your uh, classroom pedagogy. If you're interested in whole class feedback, have a look at February's GFM talk by my colleague Adrian Clarida and you'll be able to see uh, a whole raft of methods and strategies to use DIRT tasks uh, for whole class feedback. But we're going to move on and look at now what it means to get amongst the classroom and some tips of how you might do that. So put yourself into your classroom. I imagine that you have just delivered uh, a little bit of teacher input, uh, a new concept, a new topic, um, a new skill, a new um, activity within practical lessons, a new type of uh, sports activity. Put yourself back into your teaching space. You've set this, the, the situation up, you've set the activity up, you've created the success criteria, which will be uh, ideally created with pupils uh, involved. And then you set them off. You'll probably have to sort out a few practical issues, making sure everyone's got the right equipment, pens and so on, but then they're, they're off and they're settled into their activity. They're in small groups performing practically. They're individually writing their responses. Take a moment to step back 
and watch the class. Silas uh, Bingley, um, another of the School Improvement Managers, did a look and learn recently of positive teacher practice and he challenged those who are amongst us to uh, to do just that, to go and find a corner in the room and stand and watch the class for a minute. And by doing that, you'll identify students who perhaps need that little bit of extra help to get started. You'll be able to identify those who have already written three or four sentences and have gone off at lightning speed who might need a little bit of help just to make sure that they are checking uh, and, and completing everything in line with the success criteria. It might be that you remind yourself where are those individuals who might need extra help because of their uh, additional needs. It might be where are the high attainers who you need to get to at some point to, to push on and stretch. But take that time to choose where you're going to make your intervention and do some live marking, who you're going to do it with. We're all guilty at times of just using the end of the rows or the front row, but actually it might be worth investing in trying to wade through the classroom. It might mean you need to change your classroom layout so that you can access those pupils that you're going to uh, support and help by giving some live marking. So once you've chosen your pupil, how do you do it? Many of us are well experienced and it's uh, a reminder just to do the basics of get down to their level, but perhaps get down to their level over their shoulder instead of right in front where you've got the, the face to face. It's sometimes easier and more comfortable for them if you stand behind them where you can point out what they've done and you can look at their books. As you can see in the image, this is a great example. And then it's about creating a dialogue. It's not just about going in and ticking and putting annotations onto a page. It's about having a conversation with the pupil as you do that. So using phrases like, can you show me where you've done X? Or from the success criteria, can you show me where you've included that? And if they can, you can highlight that in their work. You can put brackets around it or you can underline it and, and show that, yes, they've done it. And you can congratulate them and praise them that they've done that part. It might be that you say, can you show me that? And they say, I can't. And in that dialogue, you can then say, well, that's what you need to do next. And you might use some marking annotation to show where they could do that. Using questions is the best way to do that because it involves the pupil and it enables you to have that ability to praise and support alongside them. Another tip might be to use uh, what's described in various books as zonal marking where you focus very specifically on one thing. You're not going to look and mark their entire piece of work. Perhaps you're just going to mark their introduction or you're going to mark the paragraph where they're developing an argument. Or it might be that you're looking for specific techniques. Have they used certain key words in their description? So you're very focused when you go about your live marking in order that you can see clearly what's needed and help the pupil to move on. As I mentioned, use of a marking code can be really effective. And I think it's important that you individually have a marking code, but where this is shared amongst the department, it can be really powerful because it means when other colleagues come into the classroom, whether they're just passing through, whether they're doing a drop in or a learning walk, they can be involved as well in giving that little bit of live marking in an activity and helping the pupils move on so that we're a team and we're seen as working together. And so having a marking code that's shared enables you to do that where the pupils are familiar with it. There's nothing new and it will really help build that sense of team and community within a classroom, within a department. If these marking codes are shared on the wall uh, and displayed or stuck into the front of the books, then it's really clear as well for the pupils to know what it is that they need to do when you use a, uh, an annotation, which speeds up the marking for you and their annotations in their book. And it's also there for them to refer to. Some of the annotations might be to do with spelling, punctuation and grammar, as you can see here. You've got S-Y-W-O, which might be useful in your maths and science where it's important to show that. And then once you've put that in there, you would expect the pupil to then show immediately as you walk on to the next pupil you're going to work with that they go back and they add that in. AO1 and AO2, perhaps the assessment objectives from Key Stage 4, 
are something that you could use to highlight and to show where the pupils have done well and have achieved those or where they need to include them. And it might be that you don't much need to add any annotations specific to their work, but you just have that dialogue and that explanation that then helps them to improve their next few sentences or the next part of their work. And it's worth putting in VF in the side to show that's where you had that conversation. Now that's not for others to come in and see, that's for the pupil to realise that's where my teacher spoke to me and the subsequent paragraph or the subsequent sentences that I've written, I've used something from there. So you should see a difference in their work before and after that VF that's written. So here is an example of uh, some live marking that's been done in a book. Uh, a question that students answered, they've written a paragraph and a half um, that you can see in this cutting. And as the teachers come to speak to them, the first question, where have you shown uh, explanation, which is AO2? And the students identified it. So in the margin, you mark in AO2. Yeah, well done. Can you show me where you've used some knowledge, AO1? And that's clear in your answers. And we can see that they've identified the Great Green Wall, AO1 in the margin. And then here, the name of Burkina Faso, where another um, example has been used, AO1. Can you show me where you've explained beyond and applied it to the context? And the student said, yeah, this last sentence. Planting trees is very time consuming. They can take a long time to grow. And it's at that point where the teacher can say, I think you need to add a little bit more. So we can see here, so dot, dot, dot. Can you fill that in? Can you add a little bit more to develop that application a little bit further? And off the teacher walks. Pupil then adds in this sentence afterwards, developing their answer that little bit more which will move them up through the success, success criteria or the marking levels. So not all feedback will be about a teacher annotating or writing as they pupil show their work. In uh, practical subjects, and here we've got an example from textiles, the process is much longer. And here we can see in this example I'm gonna to show to you, um, the teacher uh, from Bay House, speaking and asking questions. I want you to listen carefully as uh, this plays to the questions that she asks and the way that the dialogue between the pupil and the teacher is really, really strong. The relationships there, the praise comes through. So listen carefully to this as we watch. So, that's what you're gonna do then. So you prefer that over that, yes? I don't know. Oh, no decisions, decisions. I can't make up my mind. No. How did you do that? How was that done? Um, so I've done it on fabric. Yeah. And then I put other like, bits of fabric on it and just sewed it into that. Okay then. Okay. I could do something like that. And Miss said no, did you? So could you combine both of those somehow? Yeah. How could you combine them possibly? Yep. Yep. And you could also. Yeah. Like sparkly. Yeah. Yeah. Or you could put. You could put that circle shape there and have odd circle shapes. Yeah, that. There, couldn't it? Would you? Use this lino print again, or would you make another one? I think I might have to make a bigger one. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Why would you want to make a bigger one? Because that would just take too long, it's too small. And it's really fiddly. So I would make it a bit bigger. Um, definitely. So you could print, print the lino, and do you like the lino where it's all overlapping? Yeah. Inspired by the work of, remember? Fantastic. Yeah? So, and that really. So a really good example where at the end, the pupil was left with a clear plan of what they needed to do to move forward, but one that had been worked out together. It wasn't a case of the teacher saying, this is what you do. The questioning and the dialogue enabled that to happen and the pupil went away and then had something to work on. So we've looked at a couple of examples of feedback and marking in a book. 
uh, the sort of conversation and feedback that can be given in a practical subject to help with the academic work. But there are, there are some other forms of feedback that, uh, again, in practical subjects are worth mentioning. Some of them might be just instructional feedback. Um, and in this example uh, we're going to look at here, it's just a case of explaining what pupils should be doing for, for health and safety reasons and this also is really important form of feedback so have a listen to this clip uh, hey one thing what colour chopping board what's red chopping board for meat well not meat but what type of meat raw meat raw meat so what happens is, is now I'm not saying this hasn't been washed up well but it, there could be some raw meat in here in the little groove so if raw meat's on here and again it's cooked, it's going to be safer. So it's yellow for cooked, so you need to use the, the right colour chopper, especially with the raw ones. Now you might not do them at home, but uh, you might have washed this up, but it might be, if there's all these little cuts in there, there'd be very minor residue. Unless you put boiling water on there or sanitise it, then, then that's so make sure you use the yellow. And you can see there, displayed in the classroom, the success criteria for the health and safety reasons and the feedback there given for a really practical uh, reason. Again, helping students to move forward to do the right thing. That's an assessed part of their catering to be doing and using the right um, equipment. And then, of course, as well as the instructional um, feedback, coaching and skills development within PE, the performing arts, are a really crucial part of giving that live marking, that live feedback. It's not a case that you've got a book that you can annotate when you're coaching players on a sports pitch or developing choreography within a uh, dance studio. However, you, there are still plenty of different ways that you can do it. Getting individuals to observe a group and give that feedback. You as the teacher doing that. The use of video footage can be so powerful. Filming a, um, a performance, filming a part of a performance, a pose, uh, filming a section of play and then getting the pupil or pupils group to, to get around the camera and look at what they've just done and ask those questions, those powerful questions. What could have been done better? How could you have developed that? Whether that's tactically, whether that is uh, in terms of the skills and the technique that are being used. So there are a huge range of live marking and feedback techniques to be used that can be used in all subjects. And I would love you to all have a good go at these over the coming weeks. Just remember that the pros of live marking and feedback are really good. Reducing your workload, enabling you to give feedback at the time to the pupils, which makes it manageable and really meaningful. It's diagnostic and it's focused on what they are doing in that particular moment, in that particular paragraph, in that particular skill. And by doing it, you have that conversation. You help to build that relationship with the pupils. You're praising them. You're pushing them on. It's concise and it's regular. It's lesson by lesson. And this is done in addition to the end of unit tests where you then might do whole class feedback and dirt time. However, there are limits to it. It isn't the magic bullet. It needs to be done in conjunction with the other things because it is limited to individuals or small groups. You're gonna to have to find strategies in order to get around your class over a period of time because you won't get around the class in one lesson. You're limited in the detail that you can give. If you've got 20 minutes of a written task, how much time can you spend with one individual before you then move on to the others at the same time of having to deal with all the things we have to deal with in a classroom so you are limited and there's the element of curriculum time you can't keep redrafting and redrafting everything and improving so over a period of time this has to be used in conjunction with all of the other skills that you have in order to enable our pupils to make progress well i hope that's been of some help to you and you might have picked up some tips and some rationale for having a go at live marking and feedback if you're interested in further reading these are a couple of books that you can pick up come and ask me i've got a copy i can lend to you um, you can find them and in the walkthroughs there are some excellent um, sections that fit right in with this so feedback that moves forward on page 104 of walkthrough one, walkthrough two. Um, there's some really good tips on spot your mistakes, how to get pupils to do in that dialogue uh, and engage themselves in improving. The development of success criteria, 
Again, there's a, a whole section on that in work through walkthrough two. And also come and speak to me and the other Sims and talk in your teams. What goes well? What can you do to improve it? How can you get better? And it would be great to see departments working together as they drop in, doing live marking in each other's books, in uh, enabling pupils to really make the best and make the most progress that they can. Thank you for your time and uh, I'll see you in school.